Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to showcase the reversing the stencil technique as promised and we are going to make an art journal cover. So here is the cover and I have 32 give or take pages in my art journal. This normally comes with 60 pages but as you'll see that's too many. So I am going to work on the cover and I am going to give this a coat of the Crafters Workshop Black Gesso. It's a nice matte finish. I need the gesso. It's a little shiny the surface of this so I want something that sticks to it really really well. Making an attempt not to get all that black underneath and I'm just giving this a good coat. You can use black acrylic paint if that's what you have but you might need two coats. Now this is the Leaf Emblem stencil from the Crafters Workshop and I love the open spaces and that is what kind of stencil that you want. Now I'm just taping it down because I do not want it to move and I'm just going to say it right now I'm recovering from dental surgery so uh, things didn't exactly go smoothly but we work through all the problems. So here I am applying a coat of white gesso through the stencils. You can see it's moving so I'm getting less than a perfect stencil but as promised I'll show you how to recoup and recover from that. So I'm giving this one coat then letting it dry and coming back and giving it a, another coat. Now don't worry about the variations in the background when you put this on. That's just going to lead to more interest later on. If you're going to use a heat tool you're going to want to remove the stencil. Do not use the heat tool on the stencil. It'll warp. So I did put two coats and now I want to apply paint and I'm putting, I switched to a cadmium yellow deep violet and quinacridone magenta and I am and, and I think I got orange in there and I'm mixing and I love how these colors work and I'm just going all over the page. So where the stencil is, where the plastic is, is going to stay black which is what I wanted, kind of that stained glass look and everything else is going to be colored as I color it. I'm just mixing it wet on wet so I'm getting some of these blended colors which I love. If you've never tried the deep violet with an orange, try it. It just, oh, yum. And the yellows, it just really sings and I wanted those colors in this background or on this journal pay or journal cover. Speaking of which, it's a cover but this could just as easily be on a canvas or an art journal page. There's nothing specific about the substrate that I work on. So this is 7 by 10. Now because my stencil moved I have some of that white and you know what sometimes I like the white and I leave it. But I'm not going to do that. Here I'm just edging with the black to frame my page cover. And I'm keeping this relatively simple. Again, recovering from dental surgery, wanted to create, that's my way of escaping pain, um, is to get in the in to create. So, so now I'm taking a little bit of black paint, and this is uh, Liquitex fluid paint. And I'm just using a brush, thinning it a little bit, and painting the black where the white is. Now again, you could have left that if you liked it and most times, quite honestly, I do. It just adds that little bit of extra something with that you didn't have to work very hard. But this was a little excessive because my stencil moved when I was doing it and I just made an executive decision to paint it out. So the secret here is thinning the paint when you use a liner brush. 
and then push on the brush to make the brush do the work and fill the gap. Now, because that was black gesso and it was very, very matte, there is a difference between the black that I'm painting right now and the matte finish. This has a little bit more shine to it than the black gesso. But when I give it a varnish, I neutralize any difference. And if I didn't tell you that there was a difference, I don't know that you would have noticed. But when you're doing it, if that's one of the problems that you come up with, I just wanted to explain that. So what you could have done here is just use the black gesso and thinned it and paint it with it. And then it would be all the same matte finish. Now I'm not gonna paint out the whole thing. Once I did that, I put the stencil back on and I've given it a great splatter with gold paint. I just wanted that shimmer on the cover and I didn't want it on the parts that were black. I think that the, the sky part kind of looks ethereal, like a night sky, like a galaxy. Then I decided I wanted this saying on my art journal, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Because realistically, that's what art journaling is all about. You try something, you experiment, and sometimes it all works and you're going, yes, I love that. And other times it's like, um, I like this, but I don't like this. I wouldn't do this. I do it differently. So I stamped out the letters on scrap paper just to get the spacing. And then I am putting black acrylic paint on the Ranger foam and using that as a stamp pad and stamping the letters out black on black. Now, because everything's acrylic underneath and it's dry, when I make a mistake or it doesn't quite give me a proper stamp, I can wipe it off. And you're seeing me doing that. Again, it was a struggle creating, but I persevered because even when it's a struggle and you're creating, that beats doing anything else. I didn't want the saying to overtake the cover. So that's why I chose black instead of white. I'm just kind of repositioning where I want the letters to go and then just continuing on. So using the Ranger blending foam, filling it with black acrylic paint, and then just using it as a stamp pad is a great way of using your wooden letter stamps or silicone letter stamps. Although to be honest, most times when I'm using the letter stamps, I'm choosing a somewhat shorter saying. There's a lot of stamping here, but once you get going, it's fine. The flip through of this art journal page will be coming in a soon in an upcoming video. So be sure to subscribe. I grabbed a Julie Nunning doll from my stash. I have these stamped out. When I stamp them, I stamp out lots of them. Sometimes I pre-cut parts of them so that they're ready to go. And I can easily just put it on and it cuts my creative time. So I mixed up some Naples yellow with a little bit of orange to get a flesh tone, which I'm just painting on here. I've decided that I'm going to paint her hair gold. I'm gonna keep the colors that are in the page instead of introducing other colors. I wanted her to uh, pop. 
So I'm just painting over this and I know that I'm going to come back and I'm going to do some shading and that, that's going to add a little bit more interest. But right now I'm just worried about getting that base color down. And I'm using whatever size brush works best for me. This is a thicker liner brush. So you can see how she kind of pops. Now I chose to paint her dress purple, but in looking at it, I think maybe I could have done the orange or the, the yellow. If I really wanted to go for a pop, I could have painted her teal and that would have really shone, come off the page. But I didn't want to introduce any extra colors. Here I switched to a different brush so I get, get into the straps of her dress. Now that everything's dry, I'm just using some black and some brown to do the shading. I want the focal image to stand up from the background a little bit. Now, if you don't have the Julie Nutting stamps um, and you can get those at ninniesnapkins.com, there's a link in the description box. But if you don't have those stamps, you can use a magazine picture. You can um, draw if that's something that you can do. Fine, you know, this would be fine without something there. I could have just had the um, Mandela stencil. So I'm going to challenge you, go and try the reversing the stencil technique. You can use a different color scheme, but the steps are the same. Cover it with black gesso or black paint, put the stencil on, white gesso, colorize it as you see fit, touch ups with the black, and then embellish. I glued this down with gel medium from the Crafters Workshop. And once it was completely dry, I'm going to give it two coats of poly, Minwax Polycrylic Varnish. This is satin, so there's a bit of a sheen, which I like. Now, typically on my art journal pages, I do not varnish. I just leave it as is. But for a cover, I want it to wear well. I want some shine. I want some more stability. So I'm going to give this two coats. Here's the first coat. Then I'm going to let that dry. I, I never use a heat tool to dry the varnish. And here's the second coat. Wipe off the excess before you clean it. And here it is all completely dry. So there's the back cover and here are the coil and all the inner pages. I'm gonna put this all together and I'll be giving you a flip through and you can see what's inside and I'll answer the question, what do you do with your art journal? <laughs>